Hello everyone, you're welcome to another exciting edition of Precious Moment, an experimental hotel, Precious Amori. And today I have a very fantastic guest, two fantastic open customers, no like to hear a confession of the podcast. He's not the president, CEO of Naira, the ex Union entrepreneur. He's a simple position. How did he do that? I think I was asking one of those questions. You're welcome, sir. He is Otsumba Akiyala. That's his name. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine. You've been, we've been hearing you celebrating 40 years, 40 years. How has it been like being 40? Well, it makes no difference, to be honest. I don't, there's no special feeling that I'm not 40, so I feel a certain kind of way. It's still the same, just another day. Um, but obviously, we know it's not just another day, so it's symbolic 40, so that's why I decided to celebrate it and go all out. Well, there's no one answer to why people fail in business. Why we were in school, we, a lot, uh, we, it was economics or so, they taught us a lot of things from um, lack of capital, lack of this and lack of that. That's, that's a lot has been written about why people fail. Uh, sometimes we can say it's the economy, sometimes there are many reasons, so we can't say per se that this is why people fail in business. But one thing I know for sure is that one of the easiest ways to fail is that you sell what people don't want to buy, mm. right? Um, and it's so easy, but if you think deeply about it, it's so profound, but a lot of people still don't get that message. If you really want to make money in business, just sell what people want to buy. But what people do is that they do the contrary. They don't sell what people want to buy. They just sell what they feel that people will want to buy and they go all out for it. But if you sit down and really look for what people want to buy and you give it to them, you're going to make money. That's very interesting. I also saw an article on the internet where you said you started your business with 3,500 Naira. Who does that? Only a killer does. <laughs> Tell us how you started your business with 3,500 Naira. Well, when I say I started a business with 3,500 Naira, what I'm saying in essence is that the only money I had on me when I ventured out, the only money I had to put in this business was 3,500 naira. And what I was doing then was that I was doing a business called information marketing. I was selling information products, which is like CDs, um, manuals, say, like training manuals, like how to cook, how to make soap, how to, all those kind of materials. So you do those kind of business? So you package it, yeah. pack it together, put it online, uh, sometimes put adverts in the newspaper or pu uh, put adverts online for people to buy from you. So all I had was, I, I, I all I had was 3,500 naira to place a small little classified advert in Success Digest magazine way back in January 2003. So I created the information product just with my pen and paper, writing it down. Wow. So, but I needed money to advertise it. So all I had was 3,500 naira. So I used it to place an advert. And when I made a bit of sales, I plowed it back, put more money on advertising, used it to develop the product, and everything kept going bigger. So I started diversifying and laying my hands on other businesses since then. So those other businesses, can you tell us what business is? Like, are you into oil and gas? No, no. Maybe palm oil. Ah, uh ah. -uh. And cooking gas. Why <laughs> Why are you saying palm oil and cooking gas? I'm going to market. We really need to do that business. It's oil. When you say oil, you have to be. Is it granite oil? Is it palm oil? No, there's nothing between granite oil and cooking. Is it Ororo? Oil is oil. Oil. Maybe it's oil. You want to talk about. Oh, oil. This is not the issue. Okay. As an entrepreneur, has there been a mistake, a very large mistake? I, I think the, one of the best things to happen in someone's life is to make mistakes. L mistakes and failures in general, not just mistakes. Because um, we hear a lot of motivational speakers say things like you can't fail, religious leaders you can't fail. No, to me that's rubbish. It's okay to fail, right? There's this saying that failing is not a problem, it's not being able to get up. So you need to fail, fail fast, fail forward. 
there are times I go into projects, I'm like, I want to fail quickly. I want to fail. I want to fail. Serious? Yeah. So I want to fail. Yeah. So I want to fail so I can know because if I fail early, fail faster, it's better than when it's very big and I feel it comes all crashing down. So it's good to fail fast and fail forward. It's the beginning of the business. Yeah. So you learn, you make mistakes and learn. So I won't say a biggest mistake because when I say it that way, it's looking like a a bad thing so mistakes are positive things and so and i've made a lot of a, a lot of it i make it every day and i keep make, i keep looking forward to I new mistakes well i've made a lot of business you mistakes over there okay now we're into recession i don't know if it's affecting you Sha. I it doesn't affect it everybody, affects every somehow, business. Is. Like people, in case you have enough of questions, it affects it somehow, but would you say, how, what do you think say about Nigeria? What are we not doing right as Nigerians in this recession? That is making us always cry, oh, government, government hasn't done this. What do you think we're not doing right as individuals in this recession? Well, the, 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 there's a lot to, for, both from the people and from the government to make the country great, right? So a lot has to do with the government, the recession, government policies and all that. Um, when the government policies favor businesses, favor entrepreneurship, favor a lot of things in the economy, a lot of sectors in the economy, there won't be recession. So there's, a, there's little that the people can do on their own, but there's still a bit they can do. A great attitude is one. With a bad attitude that everything is going down, every, all of you go down, all of you will go down at the same time. But I think one important thing is discipline, rule of law. I think we are, we are our own worst enemies in this country. Um, you see someone on the road parking to pick people up and drop people while there's a lot of traffic behind him. That's so self-centered. But don't you right? think the person is just trying to help people? <laughs> Whose business is that? That's so self-centered. Now, that kind of a person, you're sure that when that kind of person gets to the government, it's going to be so self-centered. So a lot of hardship that we face is actually not government hardship. It's hardship caused by ourselves. You get in the front of traffic and you see that some commercial bus drivers have narrowed a three-lane road into one, into one lane. Yeah. So we complain that this country is so hard I've been in this traffic for one hour. That's actually not... So the government can enforce, I know, but being our own, being disciplined and um, loving each other and want, wanting the best for the country, self-centeredness is too much. I was telling someone the other day, I was like, when I wanted to like, I was like, coming, going from my house somewhere and there was like, this country, this country, I was like, hey, we are a problem. We always give different story about government not doing this, what well, well, government not doing this, yeah. what are we doing right as mm -hmm. people? Mm -hmm. And the person was like, when I know they talk like that, <laughs> all these, all these you know, I know one very funny thing about some persons. They will tell these big people. You know, they know no, they, big they, people they, yeah. were small as well yesterday. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think people think like that. That big people that come from somewhere. You always think the money just manufactured from one. <laughs> money just came from somewhere. And most times, we always think. I was telling somebody, it's very possible for people to make money in this recession. Absolutely. Because people are getting. I passed through one place in Lekki the other day. I saw houses. Buying cars, I said, this is not people. I said, this is not Nigerian. So, like, I will go further and ask, um, what's your greatest asset in life? Wow, I think my knowledge of small business and marketing. Um, I think, God forbid, if I lose everything I've got today. God forbid. Right? I do that God forbid. <laughs> if I lose everything I've got today, I'm confident I'm going to bounce back in no time, with little or no money because of the knowledge I've gained starting a business. And that's why I actually put it in a book, right? Because I just, I just uh, wrote a book, yeah. Yeah, small, small business, business, big money. And so when you've got that knowledge about how to really, really build small businesses into business, profitable yeah. ventures, then that's a big asset because if you say it's a house, it's, it's a car, all that can fade away. But once you've got head, you can take it away. Is it the Well, I talked a lot about some of my experiences since yeah. from day one. Day one yeah. Well, a lot of things I've learned along the way that I've replicated over and over again. Real facts, true life stories, and how people can do the same. Okay. So, were there times in this business that people won a lot in Naira Bet and you were so scared that, oh my God, this building that took me years to achieve is going to crash? 
like well, I was never afraid of it being crashing because I know it's a so uh, I, I follow solid sound business principles and sound gaming principles that I know that will never crash because when it's good, we we save, right? If you want to run a, a sports betting company or any gaming company for that matter, if the money is coming in and you're putting it to spend on maybe properties or parties or whatever, then when the big winnings come, then you're going to be in trouble. So for, for us, it's important that we have a float of cash, of huge reserves, so that when the big winnings come, apart from that, there's a, if you're a legal sports betting company, you must have a form of deposit with the government. Okay, a kind of bank guarantee that if there are big winnings that you can pay, that the government can go deep into it and pay the people. So that is there as well. So there was never any fear of, of the business going to go down. But apparently, we don't want people to win too much. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, what I mean. No, 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 no. Get, get, get me wrong. We don't want people to win in such a way that we'll go out of business. Out of business. Okay. Because, because it, it's a business, whether we like yes. it or not. Because if they win too much to the extent that more than what's coming in over and over and over and over again, then there's no business again. All right. So we want to make sure that everything is structured in such a way that the company remains profitable. So when the lucky guys win the big box, we pay them easily. Okay. So do you think telling your telling your um, your ideas to small-minded people will run it out? Telling your ideas, all these ideas you have today that you put together. If you are told it to one small-minded person, do you think the person would have made it go down the drain? Well, you know, I don't care what they think. I don't. I, I don't. I don't give it. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks about my idea. I actually do at my at my seminars and so I actually do teach people and I tell them sometimes to don't bother about telling anybody what you want to do. Even if possible, don't tell your family. Uh, uh, so you didn't right? tell anybody about Naira Bet your family? Well I did. I did I, I told them but because I know that they're going to receive it, they know that the things I've done in my other small business, so they know I'm capable of doing it. But if you are, especially if you're new to business, and you, maybe you go, you go read a book or you go learn something somewhere, and you get back home and tell your boyfriend or your dad or your mom, uh, this is what I'm going to do, I've learned about this, and they'll just, they'll just be like, you better go and look for a job. Or kind of, because they love you actually, because they're not sure whether you're going to make a success of what you're so excited about. So they love you, they want you to do something stable for yourself. So it's better to keep it in mind and let the fire burn in you and keep working on it. When the results start coming in, they're going to see themselves and come ask you, what are you doing? Yeah. So uh, it's just like when I even started this from Precious Moments, who are like Precious Moments? Get on, girl. You just left school. You're supposed to be a graduate. You're supposed to go get a job. I don't like a job. But this is a job. They're like, no. That was, they, people always believe in that white collar job. It's going to be bringing more the, the, salary. The, there's nothing wrong with it if that's what yeah, you want it, to do. It, it's not, there's nothing wrong, but this is what I want. Yeah. I want to do. Yeah. And people are like, ah, no. So who's going to pay you? So I'm like, ah, who's going to pay And I'm like, oh my god. I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody anymore. I want to keep this to myself. And mm. see me here today, and I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Okay, so um, what's the hardest thing you've gone through in life, in business, in family, all together? What's the hardest thing you've gone through? You know, one of the questions I find difficult to answer anytime I'm asked is like, what are the hardest things? What are the challenges? What are the mistakes and all that? I find it hard to answer because those are the things that keep me going. Um, my life is a life of challenges. Running the company, I don't do running, running the company day to day from staff management to finance. I don't do it. What I do is soft problems, right? Soft challenges. Is a tax challenge? Is a regulatory challenge? Is a, a security challenge? Is it a whatever kind of challenge? So that's what I do morning from morning to night, facing problems, solving challenges. And if anyone wants to be an entrepreneur, he should actually not only be ready to face challenges, should be excited about problems, excited about challenges, be because that's the only thing you will be doing as an entrepreneur. That's that's the job of an entrepreneur, facing problems, right? So you can't single out per se and say this particular way because that is your life. It's just like saying which day did you breathe or which day did you have most oxygen or no, it's, it's 
it's part of it's part of the day. It's normal problems, challenges, issues. That's what we do from morning till night, right? So I can't say precisely that this is my biggest challenge. So how was growing up like for you? Was it fun? Because for some people, they'll tell you, my mother, I help, I I help bread, I carry food, I have to go set firewood before I had to go to school. What's the truth? I know you're looking at me. That. What's the truth? Was it very easy for you growing up? Well, I I, I don't have a grass to grace story. I came from a typical middle class family. My dad had a house, built a house, had two houses. You know? um, we had three square meals to eat, we had like two cars in the family. So we, we <laughs> went to a decent school, Command Children's School in Bandana, Federal Government College, Enugu. Um, then, uh, pretty, pretty normal, like I was a bit kind of not, kind of serious. Right, because I kept I failed jump five times. You failed what? He failed jump five times. Who does that? Yeah. And how did you become so very <laughs> so so fail jump five times? I kept failing and failing and failing. Until I had to settle to go to a polytechnic. Then after that then obviously I tried to develop myself with other for postgraduate courses. Um, I've never been really, really the kind of serious, serious type, but I was always hungry for knowledge. I was hungry that I knew that the successful people in this world, they've done some things right, that if you can copy what they've done, that um, you, you're also get, going to get the results. So I wasn't poor, but I, I tried to add to what my parents have given me. I hustled. I did a lot of hustling. For example, there was a time that I actually sold chicken in traffic in Ibano. So now, I, I, it would, it would, it would run them out. So, they, 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 no one pressured me to do that because uh, I had a house to go to. My mom is going and I can call it for naira from her to even go and drink a beer with my friend. So it's not like I absolutely was desperate for this. So I'm not going to form a grass to rest story, but I challenged myself to do more than well, I take it from where my parents. Give, uh, give us so, yeah. So, what are the two most important days in your life? Two most important days in your life. Was it the day you got married? Was it the day you started your business? Was it? Let's want to know. I don't want to know. They want to know. To be honest, I, I don't know. I don't know my most important day. I don't know. Okay, the first day you saw your very beautiful child, someone told you to joke your wife. Are you so like, oh my god, is this the replica of me? I'm a very. No, I'm not. Hi. I'm opposite of that. Are you serious? I'm the opposite. I'm not trying to help you. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things, these things that people like, oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, okay, no more. It's no more. Uh, no more. So I don't. So I can't remember a particular day that I said. Maybe if I win a big lottery of $100 million or something, maybe. Okay. maybe. Call me. <laughs> what do you think about um, girl child education in our country? Because every day we see different stories of, um, I don't think a girl should go to school. I don't think a girl should be a governor of this of a state. I don't think a girl needs. We just, we just feel that girls should have a lot of freedom. They should be segmented to the kitchen. Are you in support of that? I don't even know anybody still says that. Yeah, there are people who say that. A lot of people say, ah, no, no, no. Why can't we arrest such people? I know some, so, so, I, some can so, I give you their numbers? I, so. yeah, I think such people should be jailed because. Well, um, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Jail, jail is enough. Just detain them. Um, just because how can you say a child should not have education? Okay, maybe in some remote parts of the country, like some extreme villages that don't have education. No, to shock you that it even happens in Lagos. No, that's you not see, possible. You see, where people no. think, oh, it's bread and butter, people are like, no, uh -uh, how will a girl, a girl become this? No, 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 that's a man's position. Uh, and I'm like... I think they are very stupid and um, they need to be educated. And, and for me to say that, so you definitely know my position. For me to say such people that yeah. are saying that should be jailed. So you know my position about that. Why? Every child is the same. What's, I've got a girl, I've got a, got a boy. Um, the head of this company is a woman who runs this company as a woman, so, come on. Hmm, interesting. I've had a beautiful time with Batsumba Akela. Wow, I'm blushing. I will tell my children I tell you today. <laughs> even if not now, even they're not coming now, just tell them in the future. Go, 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 go watch your mother. You know, actually, no parents always agree that you go to school. 
I have to say children, you know what I was, what was like you, I used to <laughs> That's what they always say. Like, ah, ah, daddy, oh, you didn't say that, bitch. I'm like, no, 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 no. Maybe you're like a mother. I'm like, what? <laughs> and my mother's like, no, you don't look like me. You're a of the father. So I really appreciate you having you here today. Thank you. For allowing us to come to this beautiful place. I Thank think this is very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, what would you say to those who are looking up to you for um, so many things, being going into entrepreneurship, those who are looking up to you, going into politics? Yeah, we didn't want to talk about the political aspect. Are you trying? Are you going to be a governor of the state now? Okay? If God says I'm going to be a governor, I'll be a governor. But well, from Oyo State, not. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, would you go back to Oyo to? Contest for governorship, 2019. No, no, 100% no. Why right now? The, uh, the, His Excellency, uh, is, uh, Governor Jimobi, yeah. he's going to decide he's going to be the next governor. So it's so up I want to be your essay on special <laughs> No, I'm not the next governor of your state. 100%. You just killed my career. Gosh. Okay. No problem. I will apply for another job. Mm -hmm. It is really nice having you on the segment. So, do yeah. you have any words for people who are looking at the first thing? Well, um, there's always a lot to, well, when you want to motivate or encourage people, there's always a lot to say. So there's no one sentence or one point I can give that can justify things. So but if, if I absolutely have to drop something, all I'll say is just start now, right? You got to start now because if you don't start now, tomorrow will still come. I made a video recently where I said, if you want to do something and it's going to take you three years to see the results and you say it's going to take a long time if you don't do it now three years will still come whether you like it or not so you regret not starting three years ago okay if you're 30 today and you say you want to go for a course or something that will take you seven years i say no i'm going to be 37 before i finish so you don't do it but fine if you don't do it seven years time you're still going to be 37 all right so you regret not doing that thing so this, there's a popular saying that the best time to plant an Iroko tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now, right? So tomorrow is still, we're still going to come. Whether you do that thing you want to do or not. So you better get doing it now, 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 now. Mm, thank you. That was a very powerful one. If he could do it, I believe you can do it. It's really nice having my viewers. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll see you not this time, friends. Another time. I feel you when you're humble, girl. Precious. Thank you.